Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about this Makita subcompact 18 volt brushless circular saw. We've used it plenty of times. Uh, there's certain times that we grab for it. It's a really light saw and it works really well. So we're gonna go over top to bottom, stick with us. So this right here is Makita's subcompact brushless circular saw. And most of you guys know the Makita stuff is usually like a teal, bluish, greenish type color. Um, they have another class of tools smaller than compact, calling it subcompact, and they're making those tools black, okay? So it's not just a paint job of some other tools, right? Or some of the tools that they have. It's actually a smaller class and more easier to use, lighter weight and stuff like that. So the model number on this one is XSH04, okay? So there's certain times that we that we reach for this saw, right? Like if you're in a really tight space or if you're working overhead, that's actually a lot of times you used for it. Or if you're working like in really tight spaces, like within like a cabinet or doing something, right? Really tight spaces. And it does work really well. Like I said, there's some instances you would use for this, but this is not the type of saw I would use like grab if I was gonna go like frame a wall or something like that, right? Um, but if I am working overhead, this is probably the saw for that. So um, let's go ahead and go over some of the marking height and then we'll bring you in closer and to get a better look at it. So this saw was designed to be compact and kept ergonomics in mind. It uses a six and a half inch blade, five eighths inch arbor, and a maximum cutting capacity at 90 degrees is two and a quarter of an inch. Maximum cutting capacity at 45 degrees is one and five eighths of an inch. It has a no load RPM speed of 5,000 RPMs. It runs on their Makita 18 volt LXT platform. It, it exceeds just 10 and a half inches, right around five and 10 and five eighths of an inch long. And the weight with a two amp hour battery is 6.4 pounds, okay? And that's one of the reasons why we reach for this saw when we are uh, working overhead or cutting up or anything like that, mainly because it's really light. 6.4 pounds with the battery is, is really light. A lot of the saws that we've been featuring or showing you on this channel are more than just 10 pounds for just the saw by itself, all right? So make sure you keep that in mind. Blade location is to the right. Um, it is a top handle and it is in their subcompact class, okay? And it uses brushless technology. And allegedly, with a five amp hour battery, it will cut roughly 174 cross cuts in two by 10 framing lumber, okay? Bevels up to 50 degrees, all right? It does include a ultra thin curved 24 toothed six and a half inch blade. Obviously we don't have that one blade right now because we've already worked through that. So one thing I want to add is this dust port is included on the saw, um, whether you get it as a tool or a kit or whatever. Um, we bought it as a part of the entire combination kit and this one was included for us. Okay. It isn't, it is installed with just one Phillips head screw right there and it does work genuinely pretty well. It's not perfect. It doesn't capture all the dust, but it does work pretty well. All right. So let's bring you in closer, take a better look at it, and then we'll put it on the track. Here is the right hand part of the saw. Okay, so this is a sidewinder type style top handle here and the blade um, assembly business part of it is here. One of the first things that immediately jumps out at you is you'll see right here on the blade guard, uh, which is plastic, the, uh, the gauge or thing that's built in that tells you kind of like the depth of cut depending on how, you, how much your uh, what your base is at, right? Like for instance, right here, you can kind of see, kind of gives you an idea of the depth of cut. And the reason they do that is because it's really, really hard to use the depth of cut gauge where the uh, depth of cut lock is. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you that when we get to that part, all right? So anyways, um, let's go ahead and look at this part of the saw. So uh, blade guard, plastic, it does have the standard uh, Makita rubberized thing, so it doesn't automatically hit plastic on metal and break that. Um, here is the arbor that comes um, on the on the saw. It does use an Allen key, um, which obviously I've always complained pretty much on these saws, anything that includes an Allen key really should just include the wrench because this gives you better leverage and, and it's just easier to use, right? I mean, if you can do that, why wouldn't they, they, they just do that? But anyways, that's there. Um, this part, I believe, feels like it's magnesium. Um, this base right here is aluminum. And if you look closely on the base, um, there is um, like a small gauge built in here, a small ruler, so to say. It goes from zero to seven, okay? And it's really aluminum. And if you look at it, it's really thin too, okay? That's kind of where they get a lot of the weight savings. Um, instead of it being like magnesium and stuff, it's aluminum and this blade guard here is plastic. A lot of people are probably gonna complain the blade 
blade guards being plastic but if you think about it on any of the job sites or anything that we've seen we've never really seen a plastic blade guard being broken anywhere okay so that may be just me but i'm just saying we just haven't really seen it all right move around to the top part or the front part of the saw so here's the front part of the saw right here okay um it's got a little uh, uh ruler metric thing right there um it's easy to see the the line of sight especially if you're using it left-handed which i know a lot of people are not because mainly it's most people are right-handed generally by the numbers okay um, it does have a positive uh, stop bevel system at 45 degrees okay it does not have one at 22.5 as uh, most um, as most saws do but this is a subcompact saw so it's kind of in a class of its own um, so here right here you will see uh, where the blade uh, or the positive bevel stop system is so if you unlock the bevel let me unlock this bevel system right here right so if you go right here watch it'll stop right there okay so if you look right there that right there is 45 degrees right so if I flip this lever up it'll bevel all the way right to 50 degrees right um, the beveling um, indicator is not necessarily too perfect or whatnot it's not as nice as some of the other ones but i get they're trying to make this out really light um, and and quick and easy to use right so it does work generally pretty well and it is a single lever system unlike some of the other saws that you see um, just really like push a bunch of knobs or turn a bunch of knobs but it's a single block lever system okay so with that being said, um, you can't really see it right here, but if you look in here, you can put a rip guide on here. Uh, we'll go around to the back where you can kind of see where that rip guide will fit in right here and you can lock it down. Although I'm not gonna, not sure how many people are gonna be using this saw to rip a bunch of like sheet goods or whatnot, all right? So with that being said, let's go ahead and look around this side, all right? So right here is obviously where the battery would go in. If you look right here, let's see if we can bevel this backwards or not, because the bevel's this way. Um, right here is the uh, blade, or the fuel indicator, of roughly how much it has. It generally works pretty well, uh, but not too much going on here. Here's the motor, obviously it seems really compact and small, right? If you look at it this way, look, look how compact this saw is, okay? It does have a nice handle right here in the front, and this is where the Allen key is stored, and it is stored by um, right here, and then you, Put it this way to lock it in so it doesn't like just randomly fall out and you lose it okay so if we bevel it up this way you can kind of see a little bit more about what's going on back here nothing too interesting or too frill it's a standard um, aluminum shoe okay so while we have you back here this is probably the easiest way to see the depth of cut adjustment right so the depth of cut adjustment is a single lever design right here as is in most saws um, it's not a huge lever like where it sticks out it's a single easy quick lever um, and you can kind of see right here that um, it, it's a black um, piece of metal with white emblems on it okay and then it's painted on there so um, it's easy to look at it this way and it probably seems pretty easy for you to see right there right but if you're actually using the saw let's say if you had a battery in here right and trying to kind of get that uh, gauge it's going to be really difficult like for instance look at it from the back part of the saw right like if you're trying to measure and put the gauge or figure out where you're gonna to try to put it, right? It's really, really hard to see, which is kind of why they put that uh, gauge markers on the on the uh, blade guard, okay? Just imagine that there's a battery here, right? So you can see even less, all right? But it does work generally pretty well, all right? So on the back part of the saw right here, you will see there are some other options in here. You can really lock in the bevel right here by doing that. Um, it does make it more stable if you do that, but for me generally, I just use it. I just let it go pretty light, and then only use a single lever lock right here. Some people are probably going to say that's dumb, that's stupid, but hey, that's just how we generally use it. Because I'm just not used to missing with too many buttons. All right, so back port here obviously where it does port is and that's really it right there's not too much frills with the saw right i can go ahead and show you um the top part of the saw again because th this is where the the safety lock is and the safety lock is both ways right you can go one way or the other and um, when you put the battery in and then you click uh, once um, before you actually activate the saw there is an led light that shows up right here we'll throw up a picture or whatnot and you can kind of see it right there okay all right so that being said um it, this saw does work generally pretty well and um, whether you use it left-handed right 
or right-handed, right? A lot of times I'll use it left-handed even though I'm a right-handed person just to kind of get a really good line of sight, right? So one of the times, like for instance, the last time I used the saw was when we were inside of a cabinet or inside of a vanity type thing and just cutting out a part of that vanity, right? Uh, mainly to replace a lot of piping and some of the plumbing that was down there. Um, so, for, so, so for that kind of thing, this saw was actually really nice, right? Because um, being a right-handed person, it is light enough to use left-handed, right? And kind of being in that double cabinet vanity, you can really get a good line of sight from right here and you can turn it, right? Make this cut, then also drop it in, plunge it in, make this cut. Um, and then when it gets to the right side, you can just bring it all the way over to the right, plunge it and make the cut and just really cut that out. So for that kind of thing, it's really nice. You don't have to bring a full size like rear hander saw or anything like that um, in there to do that. You do have to finish the cut sometimes with like a oscillating multi-tool, but for that type of stuff, it seems really nice, okay? Another time when we use the saw was when we're using it overhead. Like for instance, you do have to cut out a part of the ceiling to replace uh, um, part of the drywall or part of the plumbing that leaked or exploded and, and on one job that we had to do. So in that case, it's actually really nice. And in both of those cases, it's very convenient that you, it had the dust port, right? Like another dub that we used on was we were using it in a master bathroom, right? Just ripping up part of the, um, what do you call it? Um, hardwood floor that was in there. And even if you're inside or, or whatnot, um, or when you're inside and stuff, you don't want to necessarily have dust flying everywhere, right? So putting it, um, uh, dust collection port on here and then hooking up to a, a dust vac, it does seem to work really well. It is not perfect by any means, but I do appreciate that it does exist there. Um, this type of subcompact saw, I do think that it's probably gonna be used more indoors than outdoors, like most like rear handle saws and stuff like that are probably gonna be used more on like framing sites or building out sites, but subcompact stuff, I generally see uh, more use cases of it being used inside. And because of that, um, it is almost very critically important to have this dust port on here, okay? So that's the top to bottom inside and out part of the saw. Uh, there's one more thing I did want to mention about the saw is um, right here is where you would put a rafter hook if you did buy the accessory. It is not an accessory that comes as a part of the kit, whether you buy it in, the, in a full kit or a tool only kit. Um, you do have to buy it and put it on here separately. It attaches with two screws. Uh, I'm not gonna harp on it too much that they didn't include it because I've only been in one situation where you needed it. Like if you're outside on a ladder cutting into a saw fit or cutting off like some fascia board or something, it will be nice to just put it there, right? Just hang raft and ladder but it wasn't there but hey not too much to harp on it right because you know this is not really a framing saw this is not the saw you're going to reach for if you're you know framing rafters or anything like that that's why you would you know hook it on a rafter hook or something but hey um like i said not too much to worry about there the other doubt uh part to mention about that while we're talking about hanging the saw is right here is where you would hook some kind of like belt clip lanyard or whatever if you did want to put it on there like you, you know the lanyard that you kind of clip in and then hook somewhere um, nothing comes with it but you can tie in something and put it right there okay so uh, with that being said um, let's go ahead and put it on track and get the numbers but before we do that let's go ahead and talk about how the test is just going to be a little bit different all right so the reason the test is going to be a little bit different is because this saw uses six and a half inch blades okay um, so the avanti pro framing blades that we've used on pretty much all the saws on the track will not fit here because that's a seven and a quarter inch blade and looking around they do not make a six and a half inch blade so uh, one of the few six and a half inch blades we had available to us is this diablo um, 24 tooth frame blade so it is 24 tooth we're gonna stick with it being 24 tooth and designed for framing uh, most of the people know that Diablo generally is probably considered one of the best uh, blades on the market or whatnot so you can kind of think of it as a way of this saw has a smaller advantage by using a better blade or whatnot but hey it's the only one that we can get so um, we're gonna be using a Diablo uh, six and a half inch 24 uh, carbide tooth framing blade on this saw, not necessarily this one because this one is used, but we're gonna be getting a new one out of this pack right here and then run it on the track. We are gonna run it with the two amp hour battery and then we'll also run it with a five amp hour battery to see how much performance benefit you get with a five amp hour battery, all right? So without too much further ado, let's get to it.
So I hope you guys caught those numbers because those numbers went by really fast. Just kidding, it was nowhere nearly as fast as some of the other saws that we've tested, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and take a quick recap of it, all right? So we ran the saw with the five amp hour battery and the two amp hour battery. Um, obviously, the uh, through some of the footage, you can probably tell the five amp hour battery seems faster, but let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers, okay? So with the five amp hour battery on the double stack test, First run came in at 7.58 seconds. Second run came in at 7.42 seconds. Third run came in at 7.1 seconds, okay? Averaging those three numbers out comes to an average of 7.37 seconds, all right? On the triple sec test, first run comes in at 16.13 seconds. Second run comes in at 14.07 seconds. Third run comes in at 15.05 seconds. Averaging those three runs, the average comes out to 15.08 seconds, all right? So if you average, or if you take the total performance number by summing up the two averages, you get a whopping score of 22.45 seconds, all right? So obviously that puts this saw in last place, okay? Behind the Milwaukee M18 fuel rear handle saw with a five amp hour battery, which is faster by being at a score of let's just say 15.84 seconds okay so let's go ahead and now let's take a look at the two amp hour battery results okay running the same test two amp hour battery first run comes in at 9.59 seconds second run comes in at 9.57 seconds third run comes in at 13.25 seconds averaging those three runs comes in at 10.80 seconds Moving on to the triple stack performance test, and I really have to tell you, I wasn't sure if it was gonna make it through the triple stack test, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. First run came in at 12.53 seconds. Second run came in at 16.35 seconds. And third run came in at 16.57 seconds. Taking the average of those three runs comes in at 15.15 seconds, all right? Now, the total performance score that we get by summing up the two averages comes in at 25.95 seconds, all right? Therefore, using the two amp hour battery on this Makita subcompact saw XSH04 is actually the slowest saw that we've tested in this style, coming in at last place. So let's go ahead and talk about the two amp hour battery test. So one of the things I noticed about the two amp hour battery test was the battery was getting really hot after the second run, I would say. So after the second run, it was pretty warm and you can kind of tell by the numbers, it really, really slowed down by the third run. So because we charged the battery between the, the double stack and the triple stack test and let everything cool down, um, when it got to the triple stack test, the first run was probably the, probably the best run. But during the triple stack test, after the first run, after it, it pretty much, um, got through that, that triple stack sheet, um, it definitely slowed down and definitely felt like it was, it was heating up a lot. You can definitely tell you have to work the saw a little bit slower. Um, the battery, as you can sit here like bogging down if you're listening to the footage or whatnot a little bit and you kind of have to just work it through slowly, right? But the five amp hour battery, it wasn't nearly as bad. You could probably go a little bit more before having to really like slow the saw down. But with the two amp hour battery, it was, it was like that, okay? So this is the subcompact saw, right? So it's not designed to be like your framing saw. You don't always need that full power, rear handle, full throttle, high RPM, cutting through the toughest stuff, right, type saw. Sometimes you're just on a small job and you just need to cut, you know, I don't know, some really thin laminate or some sheet good or whatever, right? Just something really small. And this saw is probably gonna be the saw for you if you're working overhead, light, something small, right? You just need to throw it in the bag and go. Uh, 6.4 pounds with the two amp hour battery, that's really light, right? I mean, some of the tools or some of the batteries aren't even, are, are like heavier than that, right? So like I said, it's got a good place. Um, the test that we ran, it's just to give you an idea of its performance and it's like how well it does compared to some of the other saws. But this saw is really in a class of its own. Um, if you really want to compare, you probably have to compare it to some of the other uh, lower voltage, like lighter compact saws. But it's a really a great saw if you need something small and light. So. Hope this video has helped you guys out. If you want more footage like this or videos like this, definitely let me know and we'll try to work that stuff into it. Uh, definitely go check out the information stuff on the Google Sheet if you want any of that. Um, hopefully it'll help you guys out. But hope this video has helped you guys out and we'll see you guys next time.